Hello. In this video, I'm going to show a first order system and you can download the SOLIDWORKS files with the motion analyzer set up from this link on GrabCAD. So you can download the files and recreate the experiments if you're interested. I've got the SOLIDWORKS file open here. So this is a, a first order system because as you see here, the mass is roughly zero. You can't put the mass in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, you cannot put it at completely zero. So I've put it at very close to zero, which is a very good approximation of a first order system because a, a real life spring will have a, a little mass as well. So this block has uh, a neglectable amount of mass. And here you can see I've put a spring on it with a spring constant of 500 Newton per meter and a damping constant of 250 Newton per meter per second. And you don't see the damping, you just see the spring. But if you activate this checkbox, the damping is in the system. So you can download these SOLIDWORKS files to experiment. And first, I'm going to show you what the, the first order system exactly is. So this is the first order system that I'm going to use in this video. It's a spring and a damper and the mass, as mentioned, can be neglected. This is a first order system as well. Uh, in this case, uh, you, you look at the mass. Uh, and when you compare this force to the speed, it's a first order system, but not when comparing the, the force to the distance because then it's a second order system. But having said that, I'm going to look at this situation with SOLIDWORKS and MATLAB in this video. This is uh, put on these two sheets as well, so I'm going to skip those for now. And here you see the Laplace transform, the easy version of the Laplace transform uh, to get the, the first order system equation of the transfer function as you see over here. And uh, Laplace transform can be quite uh, quite difficult. There's a lot of complex maths going on behind it. But the simple explanation is just replace this dot that you see above this x by an s. And then you get uh, this uh, equation for the output divided by the input. And that's in the frequency domain. So that's, that's what I'm going to explain how to interpret this equation and the graph that comes along with it. So here I've got the, the Bode diagram from MATLAB for this problem. And uh, when you look at this general equation of every uh, first order system, then for our system, this is the, the, s the equation. So then you divide everything, every value by k to get this general uh, shape of the equation. I've done that over here and then when doing just uh, the analytics just uh, just the manual calculations you'll get that the 1 over tau value that's always the the situation here in the Bode diagram this 1 over tau value is 2 and I can have a look at that in SOLIDWORKS in SOLIDWORKS motion so I'm gonna have a look at that I've got uh, the system already set up this is my uh, motion study so I've put three motions three motion studies in this SOLIDWORKS file that you can download and always pay attention with the conversion from hertz to radians per second because you can uh, you can easily make a mistake over there so this is uh, the two radians per second and this is the the value that causes a phase shift of 45 degrees as you can see in this graph here it's 45 degrees of phase shift and the the transfer function is 0 0.0015 so when multiplying that with the the force input it's a frequency with a force input. The, the maximum value was 0 0.002. And here I've got my maximum displacement. And I can see that in this graph as well. So the, exactly the same number, luckily. So you can see the displacement value. I'll run this simulation. You, you see the maximum displacement when putting a force frequency in that I've, I can have a look at over here. So here is the, the force with a frequency. So maximum of 10 Newton, and here I've got the frequency of 32, 0.32 Hertz, which corresponds to 2 radians per second, which is also always the unit that you get in a MATLAB for creating the transfer function, uh, the Bode diagram. So I've done the same as well. Uh, so this is the frequency, and here you can see the maximum value is 0 0.015, which is corresponding exactly to this graph. Uh, pay attention to the frequency it's in, in a logari logarithmical scale and here I can see also that the phase shift is 45 degrees now to have a look at that I can put a window over here and you can see that uh, the distance from this peak to this peak is 
it's 45 degrees so it's pi over 4 it's not that easy to see but you can calculate it when you calculate the amount of distance between the peaks so from here to this point so from the this as I run a, a full sign that's 2 pi and when you look at the distance between this peak and this peak it will be one eighth of the distance from there to there so that's uh, that's al already what you can conclude you can get that out of the graph it will be easier to see the phase shift of 90 degrees in the graph so I'm gonna do that with uh, the frequency at maximum I'll get the next sheet for that too, so you can see it so here you see that the phase shift is close to 90 at a frequency of 10 Hertz close to 90 so I can see that in the graph when going to this study uh, here I've got the, the graphs again already as well when I look at this study uh, by the way I've done done another thing I've created a little bit of a shorter plot over here because otherwise there would be too many fluctuations uh, it will go up to to five seconds of simulation time per default so I've shortened it a little and then I've, I've zoomed in with these buttons I've zoomed in on the timeline so that, that you can actually get a decent view of what's going on when you run the simulation you see the, the simulation going on over here so I've done that and now when I'm gonna look at this graph I should see a phase shift uh, go back to the presentation I should see a phase shift of this value over here it's close to 90 degrees so I can have a look at that uh, sorry for the switching I can have a look at that uh, from this peak to this peak should be 90 degrees but you can, uh, you can easily see it when, when this graph goes to zero the other graph should be at a maximum so here this graph is a, at a ma maximum negative maximum and then this graph goes to zero which corresponds to a phase shift of, of 90 degrees close to 90 degrees so that's easier to see than 45 degrees phase shift and from this graph sorry here from this graph I should also be able to see what the transfer would have to be at a maximum it's a uh, 0.2 e minus 3 here I've done the calculation so the maximum displacement is transfer times force this is the transfer function in this case it's 0 0.0005 times 10 is this value and I'll, I'll see that in the SOLIDWORKS situation as well this one you see the maximum value here should correspond to half of the total value over there uh, and this corresponds exactly to this situation over here in this graph here you, here you see the calculation the distance should be 0 0.005 and I can see that in this graph as well and you see this is the higher frequency you can see that when you play it at a default speed here the speed is 1 let me see here the speed is 1 as well so it's a lot of a lower frequency and now I'm gonna look at the lowest frequency uh, I've done the calculation here as well then at the lowest frequency the you can already see on the transfer function at the lower frequency s is roughly 0 you get a transfer of 1 over k and this transfer is then 0.002 multiplied by the force then I should get a, a, a displacement maximum of 0.02 so it's 10 times as much here, here you see the calculation again and I can have a look at that go to the lowest frequency when I play the simulation you see this is a, a very low frequency and now uh, you see here the, the graph is plotted until 4 seconds and the maximum linear displacement is close to 0 0.02 very close to and I can see it over here the lower you take the frequency the closer the value would actually get to 0 0.02 which is logical because that's a uh, 1 over the spring constant value multiplied by the force so when you have a very low frequency it's, it's like you just have a constant force on the spring and then you can calculate the displacement just by using the spring constant and you don't need to look at the damper anymore at a, a lower frequency but when you get to a higher frequency you have to look at the damping so here I've got the, 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 the MATLAB commands to get this graph that you see over here the graph that I've used 
here you see the MATLAB commands and I can show how to input those MATLAB commands and I'll just copy this statement over here and then put it into MATLAB and I get a transfer function and then I go back and use the LTI view command which is the Laplace transfer interactive viewer in MATLAB and I shouldn't use a case should use the first uh, case of the L. MATLAB is case sensitive. Then I'll import the graph. This is the response on a step function. And now I want to go to a Bode plot. And now you see here the magnitude in decibels, with which I don't find convenient because then you have to do the, trans the transfer all the time. You have to do an extra conversion. I don't prefer to do that, so I'll double click this graph, go to the units, and then here, uh, don't choose magnitude as decibel, but as absolute, and then I get exactly this graph that I've discussed in this presentation over here. So hopefully that clears things up with SOLIDWORKS of what you're looking at. So low frequency, medium frequency at the transition point, and this is a higher frequency. And then you can use the Bode diagram to see what uh, the maximum the maximum displacement in your situation in your system will be so thanks for watching